just uh, excited about an opportunity. Anytime you get to extend the season, uh, our seniors have earned an opportunity for us to continue to play, uh, to play a great opponent, Iowa, uh, six and two, 16 on the season in an NFL stadium in a great city, city like Nashville. Uh, get to stay at the Gaylord Opryland Hotel, which uh, my daughters are very excited about. They've already told me we've got the indoor ice skating, we got snow tubing. Uh, so what an awesome deal. Um, you know, another positive for us in this is our guys are going to get a chance to go be home with their families for the holidays, uh, come back, play a game, and they're going to get to get, be home with them again for New Year's. So this game fit perfectly in uh, the window and opportunity that we wanted for us uh, as a team uh, in order to maximize the opportunity to play, but also give our guys an opportunity to uh, be at home and see uh, their families. So with that, I'll open up for questions. Thank you, Coach. First question is going to come also from Gabe. You talked a little about the reasons, but what was the process? I mean, did you go to the guys for, for input on, hey, where do you want to play or how'd that go? No, uh, we just looked at the calendar and, and uh, made a decision based on what we felt like was in the best interest of uh, our program competing. Moving forward, we knew we were going to get matched up against a great Big Ten opponent. We knew we were going to get to be in a city uh, like Nashville, which is central locale to uh, what most of our players' families are going to be. Uh, and we knew that we were going to be able to uh, be able to go home for Christmas and be home for New Year's. And so uh, when you wrap all of those things together, it uh, just made the perfect sense. These guys are going to get great bowl gifts. They're going to get uh, a great opportunity to stay at a great hotel uh, and compete against a very good team. So that's really what the bowl experience is about. You know, we're not going to have the opportunity to go down there for – uh, weeks and participate in all those activities. So uh, you had to make the most of the opportunity and make the most of uh, the decision. And we felt like this was the best decision and best interest of our program. Ben our next from KMU is up next. Go ahead, Ben. Hey, Coach, Jim kind of alluded to the commitment level of, of, of this team in, in playing this game. How badly does this group want to get another win and, and finish over 500 with this opportunity? Yeah, I mean, I think our, our guys, you know, I had a great conversation with our seniors tonight and, uh, and our whole team. Um, you know, we want to continue to play. Uh, we want to continue to fight and earn respect. Uh, we want to continue to put a good product on the field. Um, you know, we got we, – we've been, like Jim said, we've been under 66 times this year. Um, so we're going to have some adversity in this game. Um, but it's an opportunity for us to continue to play and compete and uh, – yeah, we're excited to do that. Peter Ball from The Athletic, go ahead. Yeah, Eli, I guess what's just the, the level of concern with having enough guys to, to be able to safely pull this game off? You got a black eye, Peter? I got a bug bite under my eye. It's very annoying. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, we got to follow protocols. Uh, no different than we have been since we started. Uh, uh, you know, on July 15th and even prior when these guys came back voluntary June 6th. So we're going to have to follow protocols. We're going to have to wear masks and practice social distancing while we're traveling. Um, but that's, uh, you know, that's what we've been doing for a long time. I, you know, I lose a little bit of my hair every time we take a test. We took another test today, I, you know, and, and won't know results till tomorrow. But uh, we will never put our players in, in harm's way or, we felt like it wasn't safe. We wouldn't. We wouldn't participate. But I don't have those uh, concerns right now. Ben Hockman, St. Louis Post Dispatch. Go ahead. Hey, Coach. If I may ask you two questions about Larry Roundtree, please. Um, one, when you heard that he was definitely going to play in this bowl game, he he put it on Twitter, so we we know he is. Uh, what was your reaction? Well, first, my re reaction was excitement and, and thankfulness and, and uh, not really surprised. No, no, he loves the game. No, he's committed to this team. He shows up every day to practice, to work, and, and uh, gives us everything he's got. And, and he's still got more in the tank. And for me, just from my little vantage point, like he's a treat to watch. Uh, he's so hard to tackle. And just talking to his teammates over the course of the year, everyone speaks so highly of him. Uh, if you don't mind, just just kind of sharing your emotions about this this man who's left an imprint on on the program. Yeah, I mean, he's one of the first guys that really welcomed me in as the head coach, and um, you know, was voted a captain. We meet once a week. He's always got a smile on his face. He's always asking how I'm doing. He always pats me on the back. He always gives me a hug. 
Um, he's a tremendous joy to be around. He's got tremendous work ethic, and no matter what he chooses to do in life, he's going to be successful because of uh, the character and determination and grit that he's shown. Um, and uh, I'm just – I'm extremely proud of him. Yeah. Thanks, Coach. Eric Blum, Columbia Daily Tribune, go ahead. Eli, I was wondering what the conversation was like with Larry Borum. I know he put on social media he was going to go to the draft yeah. in 2021. Um, do you expect him to play in the bowl game first off? Because that's technically not uh, losing any eligibility, or, or just what were those conversations like with him? Yeah, uh, Larry and I met this morning, and, uh, you know, everybody's got a, a journey and a, and a path that they want to be on, and we, we encourage everybody to chase two dreams, a life with football and a life outside of football, and, Larry's an incredibly talented young man, and in, uh, in his mind, it was the right opportunity and the right time for him to pursue his dream of, of being an NFL player, and we wish him all the best and all the success, and we're going to support him in every way we can, and um, he's choosing to do that now. Uh, he's already headed back to, to home and is going to start training at home, so he will not participate in the bowl game. Um, but uh, we're, we're so excited to watch his future and watch him go out uh, and, and get his opportunity to play in the NFL. And uh, we're excited to welcome him back whenever. Once a Tiger, always a Tiger. And we know he'll he'll be back when, uh, when he can. Dave Matter, getting a little close to the fact. Go ahead. Eli, any, any quick thoughts on Iowa? Just I don't, probably haven't looked at him too much yet. And then will you have kind of a, any normal practice week once guys get back here, or will it be kind of shortened? So, uh, you know, just initial thoughts on Iowa. They're a, a very talented defense. Uh, one of the Big Ten coaches that I know that I've tried to get a hold of said it was the best defensive front they played all year. Uh, know that they're very fundamentally sound. Coach Ferentz is going to be committed to running the football, stopping the run, and making and playing good defense. Uh, solid special team. So it's going to be a very difficult uh, opponent, uh, much in the mold of what we've seen every game in the SEC. Um, the second question was practices. Will, will, you, practice. will you have normal week of yeah, practice? Yeah, yeah. So we'll get our normal scheduled week where we get a, a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then play um, routine. So we'll get our normal pe practice periods. Uh, our coaches are game planning tonight and tomorrow, uh, and we'll we'll have an initial game plan with those for our guys. Uh, and then when they get back, we'll, we'll have a normal what would be a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday game week. Mitch Forty from Power Mizzou, go ahead. Eli, Jim said basically, you know, with a lot of the activities surrounding bowl games not happening, this is kind of the the schedule of like a, a typical away game. I guess you know, how does how does this game differ? How does it still kind of serve as a, re a reward for players even this season? Well, uh, one, we get to stay in the Gaylord Opryland Hotel instead of that wonderful Hilton Garden Inn that we stayed at in Tupelo last night. Um, so that's going to be a, a step up. You know, no offense to the Hilton Garden Inn. Um, but that's going to be an awesome opportunity. We obviously get bowl gifts and we get recognition. We get bowl gear. The guys are getting travel uh, per diem to go to and from uh, while they travel home and away. So there's a, there's a lot of rewards. There's a lot of things. Uh, obviously, you get a nationally televised game versus a quality opponent. You get to extend your season. Uh, and, and you got to remember, when this thing started, it, it was started by players saying, let us play, let us play, let us play. And uh, our team still wants to play. We still want to play. And uh, we're excited about it. And uh, we're, we're going to go out there and we're going to do our best to, to represent this, uh, this university and this state. And obviously, in a, you know, a regional opponent, I mean, I think that's what's so awesome about it. If you're playing Iowa, uh, you know, in, in Nashville, I mean, that, that's pretty good. Jack Silva from the Man Eater, go ahead. Eli, I was wondering if you had any uh, update on some of the guys who missed the Mississippi State game, like, you know, Jalen Knox, uh, uh, Jarvis Ware, Tyree Gillespie, if, if they could possibly make the make the bowl game. Um, I think that's probably a better question for the Tuesday of bowl week. Um, and uh, I'll, I should have more of an update then, but I don't now. I mean, it's pretty much the same. Uh, Owen saw him, to, our trainer saw him today, and there's not going to be really an update there until we get more into that game week. Randy Carricker, go ahead. 
Uh, Eli, you talked about the, the value for the players. In a normal year, obviously, as a program, you also get that extra week of practice. But just in terms of playing in the game, being on national TV, can you talk about what sort of value a bowl game brings to a program? Yeah, I think the prestige of playing in a bowl game, specifically the Music City Bowl that's recognized um, by recruits, they're going to be sitting around on December watching that, flipping through the channels, and and that Mizzou logo is going to be on there in an NFL stadium. And and uh, I think anytime you can be, you know, out there uh, doing something, uh, playing the game, um, that's going to represent well with recruiting. Again, at a great city that we recruit, uh, in the footprint that we recruit, so uh, any, any exposure is good exposure, right? Next up is Colin O'Brien, Jeff City News to go ahead. Hey, Coach, I know this is a decision for the players and not for you, but do you know yet if anyone who has said they will play of those group of seniors or, or, or anyone who has said they will not play yet other than the, the two guys that have? Two guys? Oh, uh, yeah, Larry, Larry Roundtree. Larry not. Yeah, Larry Roundtree said he's going to play. Uh, obviously, Larry's decided to continue his career uh, in the NFL, and we're so excited for him. Uh, have not had final conversations on on that with everybody. We were meeting with them today and having conversations to see who you know who all wants to play, and if there was anybody that didn't want to play. Um, but I anticipate, uh, outside of COVID-related issues, we'll have a we'll have a good participation. Max Baker from Missouri, and go ahead. Yeah, kind of piggybacking off of that. Do you when's like the day you have to submit your roster for? Um, I guess you would normally submit it to the SEC, but for the bowl game. And do you, do the players that you know have to opt out, or if they decide they don't want to play in the bowl game, can they be listed on that roster? I don't know, and I don't know. So we 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 signed a deal, so we're playing in the bowl game. So I guess that's when we submitted our roster, and we're gonna take whoever wants to get on that plane with us, go play. Luigi Parada came to the car. Hey, I was just wondering, what, what are you guys testing in, in the lead up of the game, especially with guys going home and, and all of that kind of logistical stuff? I was going to be a smart aleck, but I'm not going to. We tested today. Uh, we'll test the day they return, and then we'll follow up with three straight days of PCR testing uh, and a rapid antigen test just to ensure, and then uh, on site. So we'll make sure that everybody's safe and following protocols and, and, uh, Make sure there's no uh, adverse risks to anybody involved on the trip or anybody in the game. Okay, we got two more questions in the queue. We'll finish it up with these last two. First up, Eric Blum, Columbia Daily Sun. Go ahead. Hey, Eli, is there anything that the program would lose from just kind of not having a normal type of bowl game? It's kind of just more of a road game. You know, usually there's the whole process kind of happens the week of. I know you've been through it a few times. Is there anything just you can make up in those couple of days, or is it just a, you would treat it as a normal road game for the program as of now? No, I mean, it's going to be a celebration. I mean, it's a celebration, and and uh, we're going to make sure that our guys enjoy our opportunity to go to a great city, a great American city, Nashville. Uh, we're going to make sure that our guys enjoy our time while we're here and in, in, in preparation for that. You know, I think the only difference is that, you know, we're going to come back on Christmas, on the night of Christmas. Normally, you would all meet up in Nashville on the night of Christmas to get ready for that. Instead, we're meeting up here and practicing two days here and then practicing two days there. Um, but, uh, no, we're not going to treat it like another game. We're going to treat it like what it is, a bowl game. And, and uh, you know, our goal is to win the SEC East and a bowl game with class, integrity, and academic excellence. We obviously fell short of the SEC goal. Um, but we still want to win a bowl game. And we've demonstrated uh, class um, with our off-the-field uh, actions, the way we, uh, as a team, represented ourselves. Uh, the way we've been committed to our community, we've acted with integrity uh, throughout the season, with the way we've conducted ourselves uh, in recruiting, uh, the way we've induct conducted ourselves in the classroom, uh, the way we've conducted ourselves on the field. And then, you know, academic excellence. We're, we're finishing up a semester and we feel very strongly about how we're going to finish in that semester. And so we've done three of the four. Now let's finish up and finish a bowl game. And that was my message to our team. So we still got a stated goal out there that we can accomplish. And that's what we're shooting to do. All right, our final question tonight comes from Bill Pollock, Missouri Net Radio. Go ahead, Bill. Thank you. Uh, Eli, um, did the SEC get shorted with uh, Texas A&M not getting in the college football playoff? Well, we play the best conference 
uh, it, we play in the best conference in college football. We played an all SEC uh, schedule. Uh, the national media has begged for us to do uh, continuously. Uh, we did it. I think Texas A&M's got a strong football team um, that lost a road game. Um, uh, you know, to Alabama, but proves that they continue to improve each and every week. Uh, you know, I'm not in there. I'm not exactly sure how it's all decided. Um, you know, I just – I really don't think it will, it's going to be right if Clemson and Notre Dame play a third time, you know. So, I mean, it's not a best of three series, you know. But uh, maybe that felt, felt different. I don't know. But uh, we'll see. I do think Texas a and is a fine football team. And I think they do a great job. Coach Fisher does a tremendous job. Coach Elko, their defensive coordinator, does a tremendous job. You know, former Mizzou uh, O-line coach Josh Henson's their O-line coach. I know he does a tremendous job down there. So I know they got good players, and and uh, but I wasn't in that room, so I I don't really know.